It is my privilege to now invite our chief guest, Dr. Abhay Bang, founder and director of Search, to present his keynote address. Dr. Abhay Bang. Respected Chairman Shri Shekhar Bajaj, the eminent policymaker and thinker Dr. Marshalkar, the trustees of the Bajaj Foundation, family members of Bajaj family, the juries, and most important, the awardees and friends. I especially want to mention three names from the audience. One is P. Sainath, whose, whose very passionate and moving film, The Nero's Guest, we have been using in youth camps to, to sensitize youth to the plight of farmer suicide. And two ladies present here, one Shobhana Radhakrishna, who was with me in Gandhi's ashram during our childhood, and Sujata Bajaj, who was a, my small young sister, and now she has become internationally famous artist. So friends, Dr. Marshalkar has been very kind and very generous in talking about me and introducing me to you. But I'm aware of my smallness. And the highest personalities of this country have graced the occasion as the chief guests. And so it's entirely your generosity that you invite me here to celebrate with you this day, this occasion, and honor our awardees. Let me congratulate our awardees, all the four awardees, and their organizations, because they and their organizations, they all work together for the exceptional work and dedication and the impact that they have created in their communities. By giving them awards, actually, as Dr. Marshalkar very rightly said, that we are being awarded, so let's all salute them. While celebrating this occasion, I wish to ponder with you on two questions. What are we celebrating? And why are we celebrating? I propose to search with you the answer to these two questions today. 85 years ago, to be precise, in 1939, a young man of 22 who had created waves in central India at that time because he has won the record number of gold medals in the history of Nagpur University. He was invited by Jamna Lalji to meet him in Vardha. This young man went and Jamna Lalji asked him, what are your plans after having such a beautiful academic achievement? And like any other young man in those days, he said that... Uh, I'm thinking of going to the UK for studying and passing the ICS examination, equivalent of IAS today. At that time, it was ICS. So I want to go and do ICS. Jamnalaji wanted him to come and join as a professor in the new nationalist college which, which he was starting in Vartha. So Jamnalaji told him that if you go for ICS, you will serve the British for the rest of your life. If you come to me even Vardha and join this college, you will serve the country for the rest of your life. And that made the choice. The young man chose the latter option, became professor in Jamnalaji's college. Later on, he became freedom fighter, went to jail, became a lifetime Gandhian, and finally retired as one of the national leaders of Gandhian movement in India. That young man was my father. <laughs> Late Thakur Das Bang. And so, this personally connects me. If this episode had not happened, I wouldn't have happened, and I wouldn't have been here today. 
So my life is in a way indirectly, very intricately linked with the influence of Jamnalalji. Question I often ask myself as to what was the power of Jamnalalji that that young man changed the course of his life. The power came from Jamnalalji because he lived what he advised. We all know that Mahatma Gandhi's very famous quotation. It is so simple that we, we might really lose the deeper meaning of that. When he said, my life is my message. Now simple words. But how many of us can ever say that my life is my message? Mahatma Ji's beauty was that he really lived what he said and same about Jamna Lalji. And that's why such messages, such lived messages are far more powerful than spoken messages. The power of Jamna Lalji which he exerted my father came because he had lived it for the past 20 years. And hence the impact. To understand that power, I'll have to take you to Vardha of nearly 85 years earlier. Vardha was a small district town in the central part of India. During 1930s and 40s, Vardha had become an unofficial capital of nationalist movement of India because Mahatma Ji lived there. Letters from abroad, sometimes addressed as to the uncrowned emperor of India. These letters were not delivered by the British post to the Viceroy of India, but they were delivered to the Mahatma Gandhi in Sevagram. And so such was Vardha at that time. And the man who was instrumental in bringing Mahatma Gandhi to Vardha and become the host, become his host, and host of his, several of his activities was Jamnalal Bajaj. Today we know the name Bajaj. For the several very successful business activities that the family does. And the family well deserves it. But we are here today to remember the Adi Purush of this Bajaj family. Who became the adopted fifth son of Mahatma. When at the young age, Jamnalalji made this request, and with a little digression I must tell you, it's quite possible that Jamnalalji had a deep feeling of an abandoned child. At the age of five years, he was given away to Bacharaji Bajaj in Vardha. So from Rajasthan, this young child of five years was removed from his parents and he went here. He probably always carried this sense of being abandoned. And so, when he requested Mahatma Gandhi that Bapu adopt me as your fifth son, Gandhiji accepted his, his request but at the same time he said, in accepting this relationship father and son, I am the receiver and you will be the giver. And so it happened. For the next 22 years, till Jamnalalji's death in 1942, he carried the burden of becoming the host and the financer of Mahatma Gandhi's innumerable activities, accepting the risk of the wrath of British Empire, being jailed five times in the freedom movement, staking his business for supporting the freedom movement, he truly became the Bhama Shah of the freedom movement. Those of you who would know, Bhama Shah gave all his wealth to Rana Pratap in his fight. He similarly gave all his wealth. He probably was the only industrialist in India who sided and completely devoted his life, his talent, his money, his business, and his family in the service of India and that of Mahatma. There is no other such example. He was the treasurer of Congress party during the freedom movement. But additionally, there are some unknown facts. He also managed Jawaharlal Nehru's personal finances when he was in jail. And Jawaharlal ji was in jail for 11 years. 
he also helped rajendra prasad to come out of the very big family debt that his brother had taken and he also helped rajgopalachari and he financed him to buy a house in madras now jamnalal ji at that time did know that these three men would become eventually the prime minister and the president and the first governor general of india so all his support to the freedom movement and to the freedom fighters was without expecting any returns it was literally the nishkam karma yoga in the past two decades world has witnessed a very unique phenomenon and that is giving away of wealth for societal causes it famously began with the bill and melinda gates who gave away to begin with their huge wealth followed by followed by warren buffett and now hundreds of millionaires and billionaires are giving away their wealth fabulous wealth to the philanthropic causes world over why why are these gates and buffets in the world they are giving away their titles when bill gates gave his money 55 billion dollars he was the richest person in the world and by giving away this money he didn't become rich and so the warren buffett became the richest person in the world now we all know that how much is the intense competition is there to become the richest man in the world but the surprising thing happened next warren buffett said i can earn money but i don't know how to use money so he gave all that 37 billion dollar wealth to bill gates and melinda gates to use for social purposes so why is this competition to give away money and from the give away also the title of the richest man in the world to understand this we need to go little somewhere charles handy at one time was a very well known management guru next to the peter drucker he was number 2 management guru in in the world he once very perceptively said he said that marxism failed because it had a beautiful dream and the dream of marxism was really beautiful all of us would share that to have a society where everybody is equal and to everyone according to his need and from everyone according to his capacity a society where there will be no jail where will be no police a dreamland charles handy said that marxism failed because it had a beautiful dream of the society but not the methods to realize that dream it could not find the political and economic methods by which that dream could be, could become a reality but he further goes and then he says that capitalism has a beautiful capitalism has beautiful and effective methods but it has no dream it has no soul earning individual wealth alone cannot be the dream for the whole world and so what handy said was very spot on he pointed out that the capitalism needs a dream which goes beyond making individual wealth the purpose of business is to make profit but what is the purpose of the profit capitalism needs a larger purpose he advocated trusteeship as the ideal relationship between capital and the capitalist the capitalist should voluntarily transform his personal ownership of the wealth to become the trustee of his wealth that's what gandhi said the trustee protects manages grows the wealth and uses it for the larger cause gandhi often said that jamna lal bajaj comes closest to my idea of an ideal trust but then i believe that jamna lal while while warren buffet and bill gates are probably practicing what gandhi said about trusteeship 
But Jamna Lalji was different than them. Buffett gave his $37 billion wealth to philanthropy. That was a fabulous act. But not his time, not his life. He continued with his Berkshire Hathaway firm to earn further money. Bill Gates gave away, to begin with, $55 billion, but he didn't stop at that. In 2005, the Time magazine in the U.S. had selected some individuals as the global heroes of health. I and Rani were one of them. So when I had gone to receive that whatever honor or award, Bill Gates was the chief guest. He had just given away his wealth. And then while talking to us, he said that I intend within few years to completely give up my role at the Microsoft Corporation and give my entire time for the social causes. And he really did it. He resigned as the CEO of the Microsoft Corporation and devoted his complete time to Gates Foundation and for the past nearly 15 years he has been doing it. Now, Jamnalal Bajaj, he not only gave his wealth, like Buffett and Gates, he devoted his time to the social causes, like Bill Gates has been doing, but he went even further. He followed the Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy and principles in his personal life. And this is really so difficult. So difficult. The Rai Bahadur of 1918 gave up the rich living, started life, living like an ascetic, spinning charkha, weaving kadhi, khadi, and doing go seva. He had a Ford motor car. But to make it more relevant to the rural area, he turned that Ford car, he took the body of the Ford car but removed the engine and put two bullocks there. So this bullock-drawn Ford motor car, he interestingly used to call it Ox Ford because it was driven by Ox. So Ox Ford, that vehicle, was a very good symbol he not only lived in this way, but he put his family, his wife, his children through this acid test of voluntary poverty. He put Kamal Nayan and Madalsa, his two children, into Vinoba's ashram. So thus Vinobaji, uh, Jamna Ralji became not only a philanthropist, but he became a philanthropist, a trustee, and finally a sadhaka. And that is the rarest of the rare. Just to take two examples of his inner effort to rise above the ordinary feelings. Let, let me take just two examples. Even when he was businessman in the early days, when he took over from his grandfather's uh, cotton trade, the practice in Bajaj group at that time was, and this the Munims and the traders, junior employees, they used to spray water on the cotton and then sell water bundles. That made those cotton bundles heavy and it used to fetch more price. Now, young Jamnalal, who was hardly 20 at that time, he felt that it was unethical. And he couldn't do that. He asked them to stop. Now, they thought that this young boy is foolish, he doesn't understand business, doesn't understand profit. They tried to convince him that everybody does the same way. Our competitors also do this. So if we don't add water to the cotton, we will be the loser. Our margin will be less. Jamnalaji said, so be it. Doesn't matter. And so he stopped spraying water on the cotton bundles that they sold. But he was also a sharp businessman. So what he did, he put label on his cotton, water-free cotton. And very soon the Britishers who used to purchase that cotton, they realized that in spite of little higher rates, it is financially, it is profitable to purchase cotton from the Bajaj family. 
Bajaj business. So thus, Jamuna Lalji showed that ethics is the best business policy in the long run. His, his yearning for ethical business and practicing ethics in his business and personal life. The second aspect, we all know how much in our own hearts we suffer from what is called vikara. Rag, dvesh, moha, anger, krodh, all of us, 24 hours, these are the going on things in our heart. Now, a sadhaka, especially one who is following Mahatma Gandhi and Ekadash Vrata, naturally wanted to rise. Where had he reached? There is one, one very beautiful instance. Harkishan Bajaj was Jamnalal's cousin. But unfortunately, he had harassed Jamnalalji for six years by filing civil suits against him. When Harkishan Dasji was on his deathbed, Jamnalalji went to see him. And he asked him, is there anything I can do for you? So Harikishan said that I have written a book to defame you, but I don't have money to publish it. Give me money so I, that I want to publish it before I die. And Jamnalaji gave him that money. Now to rise above these kind of personal petty feelings was the another aspect. And thus Jamnalalji went beyond the buffets and gates nearly 80 years ahead of them. It's my belief that Jamnalalji shows the direction, the horizon to today's philanthropist and industrialist at which way to go and how much to go. And why only to them, to all of us? All of us are limited by our personal petty feelings, aspirations, our drives, our competition our attachment to money or if not money to fame or something else. He actually showed us and he tells us to become the trustee of the most important wealth that all of us have, that is our own life. We should become trustees of our life and use it for the social causes. To give not only wealth and time for social causes, but also to give up our greed, our anger, our jealousies and be become better human beings. By honoring today's awardees, what are we celebrating? In addition to Jamnalalji's two roles, being a freedom fighter of national eminence and the role model trustee of his wealth, there is a third aspect to his life and his work. Gandhiji had nominated Jawaharlal Nehru as his political heir, Vinobhaji as his spiritual heir. Jamna Alalji carried the legacy of Gandhi's another non-political work, which was called in those times the constructive work. Constructive work was removing poverty, unemployment, lack of sanitation, inequality, untouchability, alcohol, ignorance, discrimination from rural India. Mahatma Ji gave enormous importance to this constructive work. These were his means of parallel politics. To the extent he said that the culmination of all constructive programs, he had nearly 18 constructive programs, Today we might call them development and social reforms. But he said that the culmination of the constructive programs will be Purna Swaraj. So not only freedom from the British, but freedom from all the several maladies that, that, that are present in Indian society and villages. So while Gandhiji had adopted Jamnalal as his fifth son, his son became the adopted father of Mahatma Gandhi's constructive programs. Mahatma imagined, planned, executed and nurtured a series of constructive programs. The Trioka of Mahatma, Vinobhaji and Jamnalalji had created a new world, almost an alternative society, a new social order in and around Vardha. It was a world of alternative social and economic order. 
it was in this world of vardha that i was born brought up educated in gandhi ji's own school walked with vinoba ji holding his hands in bhudan movement and the three ashrams where i lived and studied during my childhood were all located on the land donated by jamnalal ji and built by jamnalal ji so in at several levels at several planes my life has been influenced and jamnalal ji has contributed to shaping my life i was not intending to speak anything about my personal work or personal life here as a chief guest but on the special request that uh, shekhar ji has made let me very briefly mention when i grew up in this atmosphere we used to move in bhudan paryatra from village to village one day my elder brother ashok who was 4 years older than me he and i were passing in 1963 through the rural areas of vardha hot summer and may month of vardha which is extremely hot so we stopped for a while under a tree and ashok said abhay we are now grown up i said yes we are grown up i was 13 year old he said let us decide what will we do with our life i said let us decide i thought it was like eating chapati or bakri so i said let us decide so we looked around and all this 13 years that we had seen in the villages of vardha and in the ashrams and all those constructive program they must have all come together that influence so we two brothers decided that villages of india need more food so agriculture must be improved and they need improved health so my brother said ashok said okay i'll improve agriculture of rural india so i had no other option by default then i said okay baba i'll improve health of india <laughs> at the age of 13 without really understanding the gravity of what we were committing but as if we had a tryst with destiny on that day what we will do with our life and ashok did what he said he has been working for the past 40 years in vardha with the farmers vardha yavatmal are the su- capitals of farmer suicide he has been working amongst them and naturally i had to then study medicine so i studied medicine here in india abroad when we came back to come to come to the question as to why gadchiroli that promise that we had made to each other so my role was to improve the health of rural india where should we begin now vardha was a place where i had grown up but then mahatma gandhi and vinoba and jamnalal ji had worked there what contribution could i make there so rani and i thought that we should go to the place where we are needed the most gadchuli was a new district carved out by government of maharashtra out of the earlier chandrapur district for its backwardness dense forest 40% population tribal tigers and snakes and malaria and i don't want to list them in the same line but also naxalite movement and violence so gadchuli was a district where nobody wanted to go and full of problems we heard from tulsi munda some of the aspects of tribal life gadchuli has got that kind of tribal life my apart from the inspiration that i got in childhood from gandhi ji and from vardha my own belief has been that you have only one life there is no once more here and you can't waste this life only in earning money money comes in billions and trillions how much amount of money you are going to earn after all it's going to be very 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 small fraction of the global money life is far more precious and i have only one life and there are tri- trillions of dollar in the world it's a wise it would be a stupid barter to exchange your life for the sake of money because you have one life and money is unlimited 
So we made this, I think it was a very, very practical and prudent choice not to sell your life for the sake of money, but in search of more meaningful life than money. And that's what it took us to Gadhichiroli. In hindsight, I can also say that if anybody in the young age wants to select where to work, I would advise go where the problems are and not where the facilities are. Because places with facilities don't need you. You become a problem there. <laughs> it's much better to go where nobody wants to go and you very easily become a pioneer. It doesn't take much to become a pioneer. Go where the problems are see the problem, face the challenges and try whatever little strength you have, try to solve them. And so that's why we went to Gadchurli. It's no personal wonder. There's nothing. It was part of the life, flow of the life that I, I chose that way. I, if at all credit has to be given, it has to be given to Rani who didn't have this kind of family background, but she decided to come along with me. So I'll come back to the constructive programs in that atmosphere where I grew up in Varada, these constructive programs help the poor and the needy at the material plane. For example, Khadi. Khadi was Mahatma Gandhi's probably the foremost constructive program. And even today, 75 years later, Khadi provides employment to 5 lakh spinners and weavers. Every year, Khadi fabric worth 6,000 crore rupees is still produced every year. Jamna Lalji was the first founder president of All India Khadi Board that Congress party had established. He, his wife, his children, all did spinning and they all wore Khadi. But Khadi was not merely a cloth. We need to understand that atmosphere, that, that, that influence of Khadi. We need to go to that period, Khadi transcended being merely a cloth or product. It became a weapon in the hands of Mahatma Gandhi and National Movement, a weapon by which every man, every woman, even children could fight with the British Empire by sitting at home and spinning. Gandhi made freedom movement so much accessible to everybody. So it was his political weapon. But even it went beyond that. Khadi, let me tell you two examples. There were hundreds and thousands of Khadi spinners. Once some of them went to Mahatma Gandhi and complained that Bapu, Khadi katne mein jo wages milte hain, bahut kam milte hain. Pet nahi barata hai. It was an ethical question. So Gandhi ji assigned this role to Vinobai ji, who had spent each years working on Khadi, that what should be the fair minimum wages for spinning? So Vinobhaji said, give me six months. After six months, when Vinobhaji came back to meet Gandhi, he had lost 30 pounds of weight. Gandhi ji first asked him, ye kya ho gaya? So he said, for the, you had given me a task what will be the fair and ethical minimum wage for a spinner. For the past six months, I am spinning every day eight hours. And whatever I spin, the wages I, I get, I only eat food of that, that much amount only. And this is the effect that I had on me. And so based on that, Vinova's live experience on himself, the wages of spinning were tripled by Mahatma Gandhi to make wages fair. So Khadi was not soaked. Mahatma Gandhi said at that time that I do not want my Khadi to be soaked in the blood of the poor spinner. Now such Khadi, what influence? Once in the freedom movement, when Man Morcha was, procession was going on, Bharat Mata Ki Jai. And when a rich woman, she was going in a car, but the procession was held, a procession, because of procession, the car was held up. So she was curiously looking at the procession. 
and she got so motivated emotionally that she left the car and she joined the procession and everybody was arrested so while police arrested her there were a lot of ornaments on her body but she she was going for some some other function so they told her ki madam ye sab jo dagine hain aapke alankar hain iska kya hoga pata nahi nikal dijiye arrest hone ke pehle so she took out all the ornaments must be some million rupees tied them in a handkerchief and then she looked around and she saw one man he said mr please will you take these ornaments and give it to my husband who was a very well known rich man of the of the city and then she went to jail after 6 months she was released when she came back home she thought that her husband would very severely scold her for losing all the ornaments but ornaments had already reached home so they invited that man who had brought those ornaments after giving having a dinner with him that man asked them that madam i have a very question a question is that how did you trust me from that crowd and gave this million rupees worth of ornament why did you trust that i'll really give it to your husband she said nothing you were wearing khadi and that was the only only stamp and based on that she could trust in those days khadi was a moral value system it was not cloth alone it represented simplicity austerity equality support to the farmers who produce cotton to the spinners and weavers who produce cloth khadi united the whole nation against the british khadi was a brand representing several moral and life values in a similar way each of the constructive program of mahatma gandhi which jamnalal ji supported and nurtured represented several moral value systems today's awardees are the modern day soldiers of similar constructive program and i can connect with each of them girija and his associates satish and girija were in the youth movement when i was also part of jay prakash narayan's youth movement shri rashmi bharti ji has been using science and technology to uplift in the uttarakhand we had done a little bit of that dr tulsi munda who so passionately and from her heart communicated to her a life of a tribal woman and the work she has been doing so all of these i have experienced and so i feel a personal connect with them when finally when reverend eric kumedisa was speaking it was very heartening as well as humbling to hear from him and gandhi's thoughts in philosophy being echoed back to us from africa because we are losing them and it's humbling that we lost such a voice it is heartening that it is coming back to us from africa but this is not the first time it is coming back from africa and let me tell you an interesting instance in 1894 that famous episode the peter maltesberg station where gandhi ji was thrown on the platform and that's where actually his struggle, whole struggle began so in 1994 100 years after that episode that platform was dedicated to mahatma gandhi and a statue was erected in peter maltesberg and nelson mandela was the president of south africa at that time while unveiling that statue nelson mandela said and i am trying to literally quote him he said mohandas karamchand gandhi you passed through us 100 years ago but we were ourselves wearing chain black people so we couldn't honor and recognize you but let me tell to india nelson mandela says in 1994 let me tell to india that 100 years ago you sent 
a young stumbling lawyer to us, 20 years later, we send back a Mahatma. So the birth of Satyagraha, it occurred in Johannesburg in 1906. Actually, Mahatma Gandhi as a Mahatma was born in South Africa. And so it is very heartening today to again hear a person coming back from South Africa and telling us the message of non-violence. In honoring them, all four awardees, we are assuring the Mahatma and Jamnalalji that the fight against poverty, ill health, injustice, discrimination, ignorance is not over. It is continued. Today, for all of us, for the Jamnalal Bajaj Foundation and for all of us, it is day to remember and celebrate the life of Jamnalalji and to connect with his modern day successors, the biological heirs, the philanthropical successors and to the successors of his constructive work. Let them inspire us. Thank you.